Today our session is regarding derived horizontal fragmentation. Uh, as we have discussed, there are two types of fragmentation as far as horizontal fragmentation is concerned. One is called the primary horizontal fragmentation, which we have discussed in the last lecture. And uh, the second type in the horizontal fragmentation is called the derived horizontal fragmentation. In short, we call it DHF. So in DHF, uh, uh, we have to define, it is defined on a member relation of a link according to a selection operation specified on its owner. It means that in derived horizontal fragmentation, we are looking forward for the relationships between various entities uh, or various relations in the forms of a link. Uh, and link is specified as the relationship between two relations normally represented in terms of equijoin. For example, you can see in this diagram that a skill has a relationship with an employee. So a skill has a relationship with an employee and that relationship or that link is represented in the join graph you can see on the slide as L1. And what this L1 is representing, this L1 is representing that the title has, uh, the title uh, is represented in the skill and that title is uh, there in the employee. It means that title is an attribute actually, which, which is responsible for the equijoin between a skill and employee and that formed the link that is called L1. So in that relation, we can say that skill is the owner relation and employee is the member relation. So that DHF is applied on a member relation of a link, for example, on the employee and according to the selection operation specified on its owner. So what we do is we apply a selection operator on the owner and it is defined on the member relation that is employee. So each link is represented as an equijoin and some in, in, in some relation it is also represented as semi-joins. For example, uh, you can see L2 and L3. Here we have two uh, owner relations. One, re one relation is built from employee to assignment that is represented as L2 and one relation is specified between project and assignment that is represented as L3. So you can see yourself that in employee relation, the ENO uh, is uh, there, which is the primary key in the employee relation. And in the assignment, the PNO is also there. So it means that they, they also have uh, a semi-join which exists between employee and assignment and that forms the link too. And similarly, the project and the assignment, you can see the PNO in the project and that PNO is available in the assignment. So that forms the link three, that is L3. So that has, uh, the, the, and all these relations are represented in the form of the join graph. So whenever you are applying the DHF, uh, it is recommendable that uh, you must form these types of links or draw these types of link to understand what is the owner and what is the member and how you specify various conditions. Uh, the DHF can be defined further as given a link L where owner L is S, let's assume that owner of this link is S and the member of this link is R, the derived horizontal Fragments of R are defined as, now how you can define it, uh, in, uh, you can see that Ri is equal to, uh, Ri is what? The relation which you're looking forward to break. Those, those are represented Ri. It may be R1, R2, R3, so on and so forth. So R semi-join F and Si, where R is the member and S is the owner. So we have, <clears throat> uh, semi-join condition and SI where I is between 1 and W. 
so obviously if uh, you are only interested in two fragment the w will be 2 if you are interested in three fragment the w will be 3 so where w is the maximum number of fragment that will be defined on r because r is the member relation and as we have discussed in the previous slide that uh, the condition is applied on the owner relation so s is the owner so si is equal to sigma <clears throat> this sigma is representing the selection operator as uh, you have studied in the previous database codes that whenever we talk about relational operations we talk about relation algebra <clears throat> so in the relation algebra you have relational operators which include selection which is represented as sigma which includes projection which is represented as uh, pi and then we have rename operator and then we have join then we have uh, union intersection all these operators are defined in the relation algebra so here the sigma is representing the selection operator and selection operator is responsible for a condition which is applied to a relation and actually what it does is that it uh, takes out the specified attributes according to the condition selection takes the um, some of the rows out of the relation based on the given condition where fi is the formula according to which the primary horizontal fragment s is defined because it is applied on s so <clears throat> same phf condition will be applied over here so uh, in this scenario that you have a given link l1 where owner is skill and the member is employee as we have discussed in the uh, diagram so we want to make the fragments so here we want to make this fragment on the basis of a condition which is applied to salary attribute and obviously that salary attribute is there in the scale in the owner so we apply the condition in the owner you can see skill one where sigma and then you have the condition that the salary is less than or equal to 30k uh, which is applied on the skill and was it the skill to where the salary is greater than 30,000 okay so these are the two conditions and taking these two conditions into the consideration you may have two fragments of employee one employee two and employee one is the employee one join skill one and employee two is employee join skill two so in that way according to the drive horizontal fragmentation we have uh, two fragments one is called emp1 and second is called emp2 so you can see that after, after applying these uh, conditions of DHF, now we have two fragments. One is represented as EMP1 and other one is represented as EMP2. And you can see yourself that the three rows are now there in EMP1, which is E3, E4 and E7. And there are five rows in EMP2, which is e, E1, e2 e5 e6 and e8 so in that way we have fragmented the employee on the basis of the skills using the derived horizontal fragmentation so as we have uh, discussed in the last class that whenever you are making fr uh, fragments uh, you have to go through with the check of correctness whether it is primary horizontal fragmentation, whether it is derived horizontal fragmentation, or even if we are talking about the vertical fragmentation, after the fragmentation, we have to verify. These are called the proof of correctness. And there are three, uh, uh, three uh, you can say, the properties or the characteristics which we have to check. And these three characteristics are one is called the completeness which refers to that whether all those records which are represented in the original relation are represented in the fragment or not that is called the completeness second is called the reconstruction reconstruction uh, is another important characteristic while we are checking the correctness 
which shows that uh, the um, when we combine all those fragments whether we can have the original relation or not <clears throat> so if we do not have the original schema uh, after applying the reconstruction operator then we can say that the fragments are not correct and the third condition is regarding disjointness <clears throat> which refers to uh, uh, the mutual exclusive event which says that whenever you fragment a relation one uh, representation which is there in the one fragment will not be there in any other fragment let suppose if you can see in the previous uh, slide that let's suppose e3 is represented in emp1 so e3 is not there in emp2 similarly in emp2 if there is e5 that e5 is not represented in emp1 that is basically referred to disjointness that is referred to disjointness um, condition so these are the three properties which are <coughs> which are attached to, which are basically there to check the correctness so in 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 the case of derived horizontal fragmentation if we look forward to see the completeness check the completeness is checked with reference to the referential integrity why because we are uh, referring to links and whenever we have the links between the relations as we have discussed earlier on it is based on joins so for that purpose referential integrity constraint is very important because referential integrity constraint make sure that how two relations are interlinked for example as you have observed that in the scale uh, in the uh, scale relation we have the title and that title is represented in the employee so that forms the referential integrity and actually the implementation of the referential integrity constraint is based on the allocation of the foreign key so once we have the foreign keys which are defined on the relations then we make sure that referential integrity is there let r be the member relation of a link whose owner is s which is fragmented as let's suppose fs is equal to s1 comma s2 dot 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 sn furthermore let a be the joining attribute between r and s let's take any attribute a which is a joining bit attribute between r and s for example in this in the example which we have discussed earlier on the skill uh, in the skill we have the title and in the member relation employee we have the title so there the title attribute we were talking about the title attribute but if we want to generalize it you can say that let a be the joining attribute between r and s then for each tuple of t of r uh, there should be a tuple t dash of s such that t a is equal to t dash a so iska matlab hai ki us attribute ke reference se wherever we have that tuple that has to be referenced in the in the owner relation to so owner relation mein us reference se definition honi chahiye that second is called the reconstruction reconstruction is the same so let's suppose we have emp1 and emp2 so let's take we combine the emp1 and emp2 so we get the original uh, schema definition of our problem this jointness how we make the this jointness make sure uh, in dhf uh, it is represented uh in terms of the join graphs between owners and members so once you have make those graphs that is, that will establish the disjointness condition for example uh in the previous diagram you can see here that uh, if you see the whole diagram you can see there is a join between title and eno so that that basically describes the disjointness criteria whenever you make the relations of employee similarly there is a join between employee and assignment so whenever you uh, whenever you apply a condition on the employee uh, you get various uh, fragments of assignments but that will make sure that all those relations uh, follow the disjointness criteria based on l2 similarly if you consider project and assignment then it will be based on l3 
So that is basically the three criteria that is basically represented uh, or, or the characteristics or the properties which we have to verify in any case of uh, fragmentation, whether it is primary or horizontal fragmentation, drive the horizontal <coughs> fragmentation or the vertical fragmentation. Thank you.